this area, the first gas well was drilled in 1964, which is about the discovery well, they call it, it's about a mile and a half to the east of us. From that time up through the mid 80s, we had maybe 20 or 25 gas wells in the whole area. Uh, in the early 90s, they drilled a few more wells, but the tight sand nature out here, the gas doesn't readily come out of the ground. They drill a well, it would be a really kind of mediocre producer. And we were talking in the mid to late 90s when they really started to develop modern hydrofracturing in the Barnett Shale in Texas. That, within just a matter of weeks, that technology came up here and they started fracking these old wells and found out that they could produce a huge amount of gas out of a small well. What did you call them, a barn burner? Yeah, they turned them into barn burners, you hear a lot of them say, yeah. So, from the mid to late 90s to about 2003, we went from about 25 or 30 wells in the area to 200 wells. So... But there's we, more than 200 wells there. I mean, We've seen more than 200. There must be more than that now. That's the number they claim is that there's right at 200, 200. wells. Oh, yeah. Okay. The problem is, is that most of them in this area are like you see by our house here. The minimum setback is 350 feet from a water well. Is what the state of Wyoming requires. What's the minimum setback from a house? Uh, that's disputable. They'll say 350 feet, but that one right there that's not 350 is feet. under 200 feet. Yeah. Were, Were you we living there when they came and drilled that? Uh, Part of that infrastructure was there, but all these other wells, you can see one here, it's 360 feet from our water well. Yeah. We've got one up on top that's 355 Where's feet. Where's your water well from here? Our water well is right down here, right by this blue car. You can actually oh, see yeah, the well yeah, yeah. sticking up out of the ground. Yeah. So, uh, we were here when a lot of these were drilled. And, and how long was it before you started to see? Some ch what did you notice in the water and what, what, what impact did you see? Well, you know, honestly, we, we thought we'd kind of been lucky. We noticed some subtle like odor changes and, and but compared to our neighbors, they, their water turned black, started smelling like diesel fuel. Mm. Wow. You know, we thought we'd actually maybe gotten lucky and that we hadn't had the impacts our neighbors had, but the, the testing proved us wrong on that. We've got high methane levels, not to the flammability point yet, but to the point where they recommend ventilating in your home when they, you do laundry or showers or anything like that. What? Really? Yeah, and that came from the, it's called the Agency for Toxic Substance and Disease Registry. They work with the Centers for Disease Control and they made health recommendations to us. And it was no drinking, no cooking with the water. And when you do anything like shower or laundry, you should ventilate. Do you get uh, other gases besides methane? Uh, there's uh, CO2 in the water. Uh, you know, and this is thermogenic methane. Yeah, yeah. So you get all those components, the propane, yeah, the heptane, yeah. octane. Yeah. yeah. And so you don't drink the water anymore? We don't. We still bathe in it. We yeah. still use it to water. Well, we don't grow a garden because the, the gardens don't grow anymore with the water. It must be hard to ventilate when you're showering in the winter. I mean, you get yeah. snow and ice here. It is, it's not uncommon. I mean, last winter we didn't get cold, but it's not uncommon to have 40 below zero Fahrenheit. So it is kind of hard to <laughs> open your home up and vent it, you know, when, when stuff freezes in a matter of moments. And do these, do these water uh, tanks, do they vent? They do. So, uh, do you get temperature inversions in winter? We do, we get real bad temperature inversions in the, the what they call produced water has a lot of volatiles in it. Yeah, yeah. A lot of the light in hydrocarbon so chain. Them. Yeah. yeah, benzenes, you know, the toluenes, ethyl xylene, and... Uh, It'll just sit in this valley, wouldn't it? Yeah. And it, it does, yeah. And, and, and have you had any right? health tests or health studies done in this area? We've done our own sort of health assessment um, with the help of a woman named Wilma Subra, Dr. Wilma Subra. She was also in Gasland. She's from oh, Louisiana. Yes, yes uh, I remember. Yeah. She compiled the information for us, and there are uh, some real common problems between the people that have health Nose symptoms. Bleeds, Nose uh, bleeds, uh, headaches, lack of smell and taste, yeah. headaches, dizziness, yeah. neuropathy. We're getting the same. Yeah. yeah. You know, no matter where you go, people living in close proximity to this have the same problems. Mm. It doesn't matter. Yeah. I mean, that's the great mm. equalizer, I guess, you know, that it affects all humans the same regardless of where you're from. 
So do these wells produce a lot of water? Like how often are they coming back and emptying these tanks and what are they doing with the water? Are they re-injecting it? Mm -hmm. Three or four times a week they empty this one here in front of the oh, house. Wow. What? What? With this big semi trailer. Yeah, big mm -hmm. semi trailers. That's why you'll notice the roads are so damn rough. Yeah. They just tear the roads up. And it, a lot of it's re-injected. So around here you would have a truck here or in one of these wells m most times? Yeah. Most and times a week, several times. At, at, like at all times. At all if times. they've got to come back and do each one three or four times, mm -hmm. look at them all. Yeah, they yeah. be constantly. John, where are they re injecting the yeah. Actually, If you've got all these aquifers, how can they re inject? <laughs> That's the question. They just they get an industrial. Um, they can industrialize an aquifer. Oh. All they have to do is go to the state of Wyoming oh. and apply for an underground injection oh. control. And then also the EPA has some regulations over the underground injection and they basically industrialize an aquifer. How, how deep is the aquifer they're injecting uh, into? The well's about four or five miles to the north of us. And as my understanding, their injection around that 2,500 to 3,000 foot range. Is that all they're doing? Yeah. Is that going the problem that